choreographer. Uh, I loved his book, the book he wrote about being choreographer and sort of his ascendance in this world um, is a window on the, there it is, icons and instincts uh, on choreographing complex numbers for various icons using his instincts. Here he is, Vincent Patterson. And you know, Vincent, you really, you were a fan favorite when you visited when the book was first coming out. And uh, you've got great stories about meeting Michael Jackson and Madonna and, and all of these luminaries that you've worked with. I was at the Madonna show the other night and I was thinking of you and I, and, and I want to get to your really uh, passionate stand on choreographers and the lack of recognition for them in the awards world. And I want to get to it in a second, but I want to tell you that I was thinking of you the other night at Madonna because the choreography was the whole show. I mean, she's got to nail these numbers and it's very challenging. I'm sure to sing, even if you're in and out of lip syncing, whatever, and still hit your various dance moves that are part of a theatricality, right? A story that she's telling uh, throughout that show. My question for you is, at least my starter question, is how do you just start with a blank canvas and create these super complex numbers? What do you draw from? Well, uh, I didn't choreograph this, this concert, which I thought was fantastic, by the way. And bravo to Madonna, 65 years old. And she was all over that stage all night long. I have to say, I was blown away at her energy. Just incredible, you know. On the other hand, I wonder, like, why? I, I guess it's ego why she keeps doing these things, you know, again and again and again. But I want to say before I answer that question, I love the fact that she brought three of her kids into the show. I thought that was so moving and so fantastic, and they were all wonderful. The piano solo was incredible, you know. Unreal, yeah. Her, her clearly one of her kids is a something of a virtuoso on the piano. Just fantastic. These kids from Malawi who she's adopted, bravo for her, you know. Uh, well, you know, it depends. Um, when I created the Blonde Ambition tour, which was the one I did for her, which changed. That was the that was the best one. Thank you. God damn yeah. it, that was the best one. I swear it was. We changed the face of pop concerts with that one. But, you know, she brought me in late on that one. And I had 21 days to create 18 pieces and one week of uh, pre-production. Uh, pre it was insane. But, you know, I think on these tours now, which she called this a celebration tour, I think she had an idea of what she wanted to do. She wanted to present to the world kind of her life, her career from beginning to where she is right now. And the fun thing for me, Mark, was that I almost felt like it was a celebration of her and my career together because there was so much stuff from the Blonde Ambition tour, including the the girl on the bed. Uh, oh, that's Evita that I did with her. There were scenes from Evita. There were scenes from Academy Awards. There were scenes from the Pepsi commercial, scenes from Express Yourself, and so much stuff from the Blonde Ambition tour. I was honored that she did that and, and really, really moved. She sent me some great tickets and... Uh, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed that show, but bravo to her, seriously. Yeah, uh, uh, so uh, let's go to the Blonde Ambition Tour because as you say, the, in this case, there was sort of a strategy to begin with, which is to take her through her, and by the way, it doesn't just apply to Madonna. I've always been curious about this, but Madonna shows are have such great choreographic complexity, and that's why I'm so glad we're talking to you. So uh, I get it, the cake was almost baked when you were brought in. You had to do, you had to very work very, very quickly, but uh, it just, uh, maybe this is such a layman's question that it's just uh it's almost like impossible to answer but i'm just blown away at the synchronicity and the intricate nature of the choreography while it's also telling a story and i'm just wondering you know i you know a chorus line kind of pulled back the um or you think you can dance that show kind of pulls back the curtain a little bit on you know uh, one, two, three step wave or whatever it is. But I mean, you've got to turn that into a real show. I'm just curious if you could give us a little more on how you do that. Do you sit down like, a, like an architect would over a, you know, a drafting table? Well, first you listen to the music. First you sit down in a tour situation like this. You sit down with Madonna and decide what songs are, what's the song list? What are we going to do? What order is it going to be presented in? Then we decide what kind of dancers do we want to have to fulfill these 
these uh, pieces, each one being specific to the song itself and each one being a little bit different. That's from the Blonde Ambition Tour. That was uh, Keep It Together at the end. Um, and then basically you sit with Madonna and you kind of say, okay, these are some ideas I have. And what about this? I mean, I'm going to jump back to the Blonde Ambition Tour again. But I remember like with Like a Virgin, she had an idea of doing it as a heavy duty, slow rock and roll thing, like a Patti Smith kind of Patty Smythe kind of piece, right? And I had this idea of doing it as a Middle Eastern world piece with her masturbating on a bed with two eunuchs up there. With <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's a give and take. And, uh, you know, but you work with her together like that and you both come up with what you're going to do. Then most likely what happens is you as the choreographer, yeah, that was the piece I'm talking about. <laughs> wow. The choreographer, you you work with the dancers first and you kind of teach them everything and you work with them while Madonna's out, you know, working with the band, practicing her songs, doing all that stuff, keeping herself in shape. She comes in and joins the group and, and then she starts to learn the choreography. She puts in her two cents, rightly so, and lets you know if this, she likes it or if she doesn't, could you change this? This is comfortable for me. This is not. And then it's weeks and weeks and weeks of rehearsal. And um, I'm telling you, I was blown away at these kids. These kids were brilliant in this show. My God, they did everything. They could do everything from gymnastics to, to ballet to, to, to hip hop. Although I like that we didn't see too much hip hop in this show. It was really much more sophisticated movement and celebration. And I was really proud of that, you know. It but, was, uh, I thought, I mean, you summarized it, of course, perfectly. I mean, it, I, I don't. I don't share your last comment about it, which was or when you were kind of summarizing it going, why does she do it still? Um, I don't know what you mean by that because she's still able to hit the ball, right, Vincent Patterson? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, she blew me away. I, I didn't know what to expect. I hadn't seen her live in a, in a while. And she truly, she she owned that stage. And she brought it all the way. And as you say, it's a long show late at night. doesn't finish till one in the morning. One in the morning. And you know what I loved about this show too? She really spoke intimately to everybody. I mean, she it she really spoke from the heart and that really moved me, you know? And, you know, talking about her kids, talking about her beginning, talking about her past. And I, I was blown away. I, I thought that the most beautiful section when she was giving, paying tribute to her dear friends who had died of AIDS. Oh, that was so moving, man. Oh, that was so moving. Survivor guilt. You know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I was um, in San Francisco uh, working uh, in San Francisco at the NBC station there uh, in the 80s when when AIDS was the scourge of the oh, and we were yeah. losing our friends. It was uh, positively awful. Uh, I, but, but and I guess what I'm trying to say is those same emotions, uh, some of them uh, connections to those emotions I felt during that that number. It was yeah. really powerful. Yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, um, all right. Now I want to talk to you about. Um, Look, you have this body of work, and we've discussed it, and people should go back and watch the video when you first came on the show, uh, all about your book, which is just really worth reading. It's a great read, great yeah. stories. So it's interesting. I look at the Oscars and a lot of these award shows as both ridiculous, because you can't compare art, and also important, because they celebrate good work. Yes. And your point I understand, and I'm so glad we got to hear it from you, is that choreography has been something of a, an orphan to a lot of these award shows. Not a lot of the award shows, specifically the Oscars. I okay. mean, the Emmys give a, an award for best choreography. And on Broadway, the Tonys give an Emmy. Uh, give an well, on, on Broadway, the Tonys, you know, are going yeah. to. But the, but the SAG Awards, you guys are not in that, are you? No, SAG Awards don't. People's Choice Awards don't. But Golden are, Globes. I mean, come on. To say the Tonys and the Emmys and the Oscars. Okay. You know? Now, the, the sad thing about it is that, the you know, all they've ever done years and years ago in the 30s, choreographers did get awards. But... They also, the Directors Guild, decided they were called dance directors. And what happened was Director Guild decided they didn't want anybody else to have any kind of title that had director in it. So that ceased immediately. And along with that, ceased the tribute to choreographers. Now, a few choreographers over the years have received some awards. Gene Kelly received them. Jerome Robbins from West Side Story back in the day, he received an award. But these are only called honorary Oscars. Never a... A, a, a yearly annual award happens. The last person to receive one was 27 years ago, and that was Michael Kidd, who did so many, so many musicals. And 
he didn't even receive it for a specific film. He received it for his body of work. But that was 27 years ago. The last one before that was a woman named Ona White in 1969 for Oliver, 55 years ago. Now, when you think of the, the films, I mean, not only just this year, but when everything from La La Land, Grease, Saturday Night Fever, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Footloose, Flashdance, I mean, on and on and on, none of these films have ever been awarded a, a, an honorary Academy Award for the choreographer. It's interesting, Definitely. and we get the we get the comment that you know how many movies have choreography. You you know you so speak to that. So let me tell you, this is the thing. There's a lot of ignorance about what choreographers do. Choreographers don't just create a big dance. They can create a moment in a piece. They can create staging for somebody. They can create character for somebody. They can teach somebody how to move uh, in a specific way if it's a period piece. Um, so it's not just like if you look at the color purple this year, you see choreography from one end, one extreme to the other. Fatima Robinson did a fantastic job. One of the first shots, you're coming down that lane and there's two girls sitting up in a tree doing hand jive kind of thing. That's choreography. People don't realize this. Um, jump into a crazy thing in Express Yourself video. I taught Madonna how to crawl across the floor like a cat before she spilled what milk down her face. That's choreography. It's not just making a big dance number happen, you know, like like we saw Ken on, um, you know, uh, on, on the, the Oscars. Yeah. yeah. But let me just give you a, a list of the of some of the some of the films this year that had choreography. So you have The Color Purple, Poor Things, Barbie. Saltburn, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Magic Mike's Last Dance, Guardian of the Galaxy 3, Are You There? It's Me, Margaret, Wonka, The Marvels, Trolls 3, Asteroid City, Megan, and if you want to go into the documentary world, you've got Taylor Swift's Era Tour and you've got Beyonce's Renaissance Tour. Now, those are just a handful of things that I put together quickly. There is choreography in so many films. So, you know, this this argument that there's not, not enough movies to have uh, a choreography award is just not acceptable. I wouldn't argue against it, but I would tell you that you've just explained something to us that I wasn't aware of. I mean, I might have been roughly aware of it. When you say it, it makes sense. But it seems to me you need a special skill to discern the choreography and to evaluate the choreography. So if you're going to be giving awards, it seems to me that the Academy, which you know is a bunch of BS, it's a bunch of, it's thousands of people who who, who look like me sitting around in t-shirts on the couch uh, watching movies. And then there are uh, maybe a thousand of them that are really taking it seriously and going to the theater and watching all the movies. But I, I'm just telling you, it's it's a pretty broad base. I'm guessing a lot of them, I'll go 80% of them don't know D about choreography to the point that they could evaluate these things the way they need to be evaluated. You're absolutely right. And part of that is that there are only, as of last year, <laughs> first for about... 30 years, I've been the only choreographer in the Academy Award, in the in AMPAs. The only one out of last year, Fatima, who did uh, Color Purple, got in. Two of us out of 10,500 plus members. There you go. It's, and, and, and the only way that an Oscar, a new Oscar can happen is by starting um, a proposal made in your specific branch. Well, Choreographers for the first time have been put into a branch, but they lumped us into a branch. And I'm trying to be positive about this because we've had some discussions with some people in membership. Uh, Meredith well, Schick Vincent, when you use the words lumped into, it doesn't keep it positive. Well, <laughs> okay, let me say we have been kindly put into a branch. <laughs> thank you. That's much, time. much. Thank you. That's better. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 But, but. Meredith Shea and um, Meredith Shea and Natalie Wade, who work on a membership committee, have been in discussions with us now because we're really seriously pushing this. But what happens is we are into a branch called production and technology, which does not really typify or explain what we do. We are in there with colorists, script supervisors, producers, stunt coordinators, music supervisors. 
in order to get into the academy, you have to have two sponsors from your branch. Has to be your branch nominate you. The problem is all of these people, we don't work with them. We work with directors and, and, and actors and sometimes writers, sometimes costume directors and also cinematographers, but we don't work with colorists. We don't work with script supervisors. So there are many, there's a woman, Mandy Moore. I mean, she choreographed the Academy this year. She did La La Land. She's done about 15 films, you know. Sure. She can't get in because she can't find any sponsors who feel that they know enough about her work to be able to sponsor her. So it's a catch 22 situation. Until we get more choreographers into the Academy, it's going to be very difficult for us to be able to make a proposal to the awards committee, who then I has see. to make a proposal to the awards rule committee, to then make a proposal to the directors, board of directors. It's, it's, it's a bit convoluted, but I understand the reason. I mean, they don't want to change rules. Well, they're, they're, they're trying to evolve. Uh, they are, like many institutions, slow to evolve. They are yeah. trying to... I think speed up that process. They're trying, you know, for uh, ethnic inclusion that they didn't really have yes. historically, and, and then they increase a category, which I promised everybody I would, uh, I would mention. It makes no sense to me. The, the stunt category does make sense. I think the idea that you reward these stunt people with some kind of recognition uh, is, and these stunt coordinators is a really good idea. The thing that is a questionable uh, addition, just because we're talking, and you know, and we're both in the business, Vincent, if I can say that. Uh, <laughs> I um, I think it's ridiculous to have a casting uh, a, a casting award, and and here's why. You may say, well, what are you talking about, Mark? It's very important who gets cast in a movie. Well, can you show me of the top ten nominated films the actors who were cast who weren't just offered the parts? Right. I mean, I, I understand that they may have to read, just but but these are actors who were offered. These parts, there's no casting associated. The, all of these people aren't unknowns. This isn't like an A and R person at a music company finding the next great breakthrough performer. These, and the other thing I'll just say is that casting is now done with videoing yourself with pages that they send you, the sides they call them. You video yourself and you send it off to a casting director. Then those, maybe they're a hundred, maybe there's several hundred, are called and producers and directors go through them and they make a choice. But that's generally not for a lead. That's for other supporting performers in a project. So the casting, they're like, so you get an award for what? For packaging all those videos and sending them out to the producer and director? It's absurd. I, I don't get it. Absolutely. Well, look, I mean, you know, awards are kind of crazy anyway, because as you said at the beginning, and as someone said on the Academy, everybody, there shouldn't be really awards. I mean, everybody's equal. Every, you're, you're all working together on whatever project, whatever film you're working on to make the best product you possibly can. So to say one is better than the other, it's so personal. And truly, it's, it's voted on by a handful of people. You know, uh, everybody can vote. Not everybody does vote. But it's not like it's voted on like, you know, from everybody in the United States or something like that, or everybody who's seen the movie, like the People's Choice Awards. So I don't really have a pro. I mean, I have a little bit of a problem that casting directors have been offered the Academy Award before choreographers. Because, Thank you. I thought that might yeah, rub you the wrong well, way. We are on the set, you know, I mean, this sure. is... Uh, let me just explain a little bit more about what choreographers do. I only have another minute, but yeah, thank you. Go ahead. I will. You, re you get a script and it says, and then they dance. That's it. And then they <laughs> dance. So you as a choreographer, you have to write, you have to write it. Then you have to choreograph it. Then you have to take that actor and you have to teach them. So you become a teacher. Then you have to kind of direct them. Here I am with Bjork and, and Catherine Deneuve in, in Dancer in the Dark. Then you have to direct them because once you hand this to the director, he doesn't want to start from scratch. He never directs the, 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 the stars in, in the choreography. So we're writers, we're, we are directors, we are costume designers, we, we work with the music. We do so much more and, and we're hands on all the time. And all I want to say is anybody who feels that choreographers should get an award, I would ask them to write to the Academy Award, AMPAs. 
And that is exactly 8949 Wilshire Boulevard. Bill Kramer is the CEO and Janet Yang is the president. They're both wonderful people, but the more they hear from the public that wouldn't it be nice to have an award for choreography, maybe then Mark, something will change. And I just I it's, thank yeah. you for allowing me to talk about this on your show. No, it's, it's something you, you, you feel appropriately passionate about, uh, you know, Vincent, you've made such a great, um, great contribution through the years. And I think that you, you make some very good points there. So, uh, there you see it. And, uh, people can uh, join your effort and uh, sadly the oscars very slow to make changes as we were saying before but maybe something happens uh meantime your book uh good luck with it and thanks so much with um thanks so much for uh, for hanging out with us for a few minutes there it is icons and instincts vincent patterson pick it up it's a great read you will not be disappointed thanks vince talk to you soon thank you hi it's mark and i thought that was great Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.